Good evening and welcome to Talk Pixar. In tonight's program, we visit three different parts of our country. All of them have interesting stories to tell. All three are remote, all closely entwined with their cultural roots, and all embracing change and development. In the remote mountains of Sundown Province is Telefomin District. The people of Telefomin have seen no real development for over three decades. Their local member of parliament, Solan Mirisim, has plans to change that. Bridget Komatep celebrated independence in Telefomin and filed this report. Surrounded by breathtaking, picturesque, misty mountain ranges is Telefomin District. Telefomin District is geographically closer to Taboville in Western Province. The life of a typical Telefomin is way back, simple and hard in this remote part of Sundown Province. The people of Telefomin comprise the Mountain Oak people, a cultural group with numerous subgroups including Telefol, the Urupmin and the Wapkamin. Telefomin District is one of the 89 districts that's least developed. Most people access basic services from Tabubil, which is only a 15 minutes flight away compared to about three hours flight from the provincial capital of Vanimo. Air transport is the only means to bring in supplies, a costly exercise, but that has been the case for the people here. When store goods are flown into the district and finally into the trade stores, it's very expensive. For a one kilogram of rice, it costs almost 10 kina, plus other basic necessities are also very expensive. But the people are mainly subsistence farmers with taro as their main staple food. Fresh vegetables are grown here, but there are no market opportunities to sell their produce. On Monday, 16 September 2013, the people of Telefomin woke up to the start of many good things to come. For the first time, they commemorated the independence anniversary at the district office. The church's influence stuck out in the celebrations as leaders and representatives from the different churches participated in the Jesus March. Dressed in PNG colors, joined his people to mark the special occasion. It was the first time and something they had been denied for many years. As the local MP addressed the crowd, there were mixed feelings about independence and whether to trust the new leader as they have lost faith in previous members of parliament, most of whom have operated from Vanimo and Port Mosby. After the independence come, uh, me play with him, uh, uh, wrote Lo Octedi Kamantablo here. Uh, it's been a promise uh, since member after member. But no one player wrote linking from Tabubil to Telephone. And we have this problem. It's, it's, it's an ongoing problem uh, for us. After 38 years of independence. Now we got banking now. System is stopping this. Let's blow me. Remember, blow me, bring me companies. Now we can go bank. We can withdraw. Before no got. Me say go lot of mobile. Me la withdraw. Me must spend in Rapla 200 kina long. Buy in Balusi go withdraw. Now me buy in Rapla 200 kina long. Come back in. Because we look like up change or coins left long. Me carry come back in the family. Me talk talk behalf long all. Lo you me ogata. Lo me pla like in the service must come through lo me pla. Mr. Mirisim told the people that for the first time, the independent celebrations were staged in the district and it won't be the last as he pledged 100,000 kina for next year's celebrations. Budget no money for people from Telahumim by go along this labuk taso. Telahumim me lang apil, 38 years. Telahumim no got five year development plan no send no money so we lose. People in all of them cities. Five years long, honorable Solan Mirisim, money for you people by going to the book tassel. All got a problem with long rock me, tifal me, trefoli, tagatem tigin, what him have? Ever what is time is in the book. So for me, what is the book tassel, not for the money on tablets in the book. He told them about his development plans with a rural electrification project being at the top of the agenda. This, he says, will generate power to this remote location. 
Although isolated, the people have purchased basic electrical items and are only waiting for when power will be supplied. Education in Telefomin is one area the MP is passionate about. He has allocated 1.2 million kina for students from Telefomin wishing to take up skills training at various tertiary institutions in the country. About 15 minutes by chopper over the steep mountain ranges of Telefomin district lies Eliptomin village. Over 5,000 people are scattered across the mountains. This village is only accessible by air and road, but only by those so familiar with the terrain. For the first time since independence, they got to see real tangible development in the opening of a footbridge. There was much celebration. At the cost of 300,000 kina, this footbridge will benefit about 17 villages a day after independence marked its opening. There to join in the celebrations were local MP Solan Mirisim and Nigel Parker, the managing director of Octedi Mining Limited, the company that assisted with logistics to transport all the materials onto the worksite. A real feeling of achievement was in the air as everyone crossed over the permanent footbridge for the first time. Another notable development is the recent launching of information technology access through Telecom PNG Foundation's Clean It rollout program. Even though remote, both Telecom in primary and high school will receive internet services through Telecom PNG's VSET. Is e library, e research, e learning. It's all right here on high school. Give yourself time and maximize it. Use it to the best. I work on encouraging that ICT, information communication technology, and we must uh, spread out the country so that at least site law school through what I'm standing by me looking today, that e government, uh, e, e, e uh, uh, communication through the use of broadband na uh, internet, only can downlink him to all the information or like it's in where I'm I, I, I not stop here long, long school. Communication systems are gradually improving. The local MP plans to bring in nine towers on top of the existing ones to make communication accessible for villages in Eliptamin, Bimin and other mountain villages. Time all this place, tower start low one one year on top. But we start putting more broadband through the digital long putting more computer on the one one schools right inside the bush longer than the telephone. You can stop the running. This is the This is the broadband to go on the running. Then the computer can stop school money by learning. Computer, not running. The five year mill like exceeding this plan. With any development comes criticism, and Mr. Mirisim is not immune to critics. He only asks that his people give him a chance to develop the district under the flagship of People's National Congress Party, to which Prime Minister Peter O'Neill is the party leader. He says this is only the beginning of good things to come. You're watching Talk Pixar. During our country's 38th independence celebrations, the people of Yangru Sausia in the East Sipic province commemorated more than the country's birth. They also celebrated the visit of their local member and minister for trade, commerce and industry, Richard Maru. To his district, Mr. Maru brought good news of development projects he hopes will change the lives and mindsets of his people. In his own words, Mr. Maru has described the new beginning for young Guru Sausia, Emmy Time Long Straight in Place. This report from Cedric Bajole.
Richard Maru returned to Yangaru Saucia district to spend the long independence weekend with his people. Accompanied by his wife Betsiba, they visited villages in some of the most service deprived areas. Test of his kind, no mipla receive him. One pla kind man also where we come down a level no mipla. For years, service delivery has been non-existent with basic infrastructures such as schools, roads and health centers deteriorating. It is a rebuilding phase for the district and Mr. Maru has wasted no time in beginning that process. His immediate concerns is rebuilding the district's infrastructures and education is at the top of that list. 2.5 million kina has been allocated to schools for building new classrooms and maintaining existing ones. It is my desire, over the five years that I'm, I, uh, I am a member for Yangon Saucia, I do not any want any more bush material in all my schools. All the teachers' houses have to be changed. All the, uh, all the classrooms have to be changed from uh, Morota, Sego Palm Tech, uh, classrooms to, to permanent classrooms. We want to give a completely new look. Uh, this is consistent with education being my number one priority for my district in Yangur South Sea. Health services have also plummeted due to lack of funding and support. Existing aid posts have been closed for the last few years. Last government only lari na house ki pass five billion ogeta. Now lo tiplo me will get the hospital open. Please DA make sure next four weeks house must ready lo opening. So you must be opening back house na bring the service go around. People are buying pennies from the ambulance and people are only missed up. How sick people are maintaining, putting power go back, putting water go back. He be ready now by making some health minister come. But Katiribo na open back new look younger how sick. Minister Maru has also approved road projects to begin. Access for the people has been an ongoing issue. 39 years, 38 years. No one road services like this. People only carry Kakoi wall highway. So my plan is inside the next two years. Me like finish him over the road, east, west, Yanguru. Couldn't him over the missing links, blow you me, including Wehun Boynam. Place like Musuagan, Civic Plain. So inside of Tubla Yar, our plan is over the road must connect the immigrant all the way the road, low over the district Blomibla. I'm number one something. Public utilities such as clean water supplies and electricity also accompany these projects. Work has already begun on extending the electricity supply. Welcome, Lawlessness has also spiraled out of control in the district. To deal with this, Mr. Maru has put in a submission for a permanent mobile squad to be stationed in the district. I put a submission before government now to assist us with um, a call out for the police to go down and have a major operation to clean up the place. We are also appealing to uh, all my folks in the young social district to uh, surrender all the, the gas cylinders and, and all the equipment and, and I'm really thankful that a number of villages have already done that. But two recent developments could take the district in leaps and bounds. A gold exploration in the district and a neighboring Maprik and a billion dollar oil palm project. Uh, we're looking forward to uh, announcing this project which will be the biggest single agricultural project in our country's history. And we are talking about initial investment of 1.5 billion. This project will not only be the biggest oil palm project in the country, but will also be able to create over 20,000 formal jobs uh, within the district and the province. And uh, the Emmanuel Alexander Mining uh, is looking at putting down three drills in the, in the month of November. Uh, exploration is still going, and uh, I'm I, I'm quite excited about the. Uh, the drilling phase uh, they are going through, and obviously subject to the the findings of the uh, of the drills that they will put. Um, we could have a mine in the in, in the district. While looking optimistic about a gold mine in his electorate, Mr. Maru says the oil palm project will bring in many offshoot benefits. 
For years, copra has been a main source of income generation. However, it has been affected by the cocoa pot borer. Already, the member and his team have arranged for clones to be brought in for replanting. Uh, in the next two months, we will hope to finalize the report. Now, we will buy put him over, over five years, put him three million long, to develop him more nubla planting material, nubla clone, block cocoa, but we will distribute him more place long. We will plant him kind nubla cocoa, we seek him and him. But while that happens, locals can tap into other areas when the oil pump project kicks off. A recent graduation of locals in business management training is the beginning of many more to come. Mr. Maru has called this a new beginning for his district and he believes it can become a model district in the East Sipic province. Uh, so we're trying to get the basics right um, before we can, we can start to take advantage of the opportunities that are before us. <laughs> Welcome back to Talk Pixar. The cultural heritage and everyday life of the Lake Kutubu people of Southern Highlands clearly indicates the inseparable link between the people and their environment. Although modernization has stepped in and altered their way of survival, conserving the natural resources has soundly held the rural community together and kept much of their culture intact. Salome Vincent shares with us what the people of Lake Kutubu are doing to preserve the natural resources and traditional knowledge. This is the simple life of women in Daga village in the Lake Kutubu region of Southern Highlands province. This particular morning is quite special. Locals were up early to the sound of kundu drums and faint chanting in the distance. The Kutubu Kundu and Digaso festival was on to promote the lifestyle, culture and livelihood of the Foe, Fasu and Bosavi tribes. <laughs> The Kutubu region is populated by the Fasu, Foe, and a minority of Huli speaking groups. However, the dominant Foe culture is dying out in many places. Thus, the Kutubu Kundu and Digaso festival was instigated by the locals to uphold and carry on the culture for the purpose of survival. The traditional livelihood of the Kutubu people is similar to that of other rural and remote regions in the country. It is dependent on natural resources. For years, the Kutubu people have been able to conserve many of their natural resources. In this modern time and age, they have adjusted to the monetary system of trade to meet their present needs. Upon observation, their traditional and modern lifestyle today is generally balanced. Kutubu is known as the last Papua district of the Southern Highlands province. The climate and vegetation is similar to that of the coast. Here, women still don the traditional cover head covering made from a tree bark. Yeah. 
their local vernacular is strongly spoken. And their men and adolescent boys still live in these long houseman built in the middle of the village. The women live separately with the younger boys and girls. Gardening is a shared responsibility while hunting is left to the men. Lake Kotobu boasts one of the richest in flora and fauna and therefore the cultural heritage and practices of the people of Lake Kotobu is highlighted in the traditional use of their natural resources. This and their role as middlemen in traditional trade networks between coastal and highland communities have sustained their cultural heritage for many years. Besides their spectacular body art and traditional attire displayed during the two-day Kutubu Kundu and Digasso festival, the Digasso oil holds a special place in their cultural identity and trade networks. <laughs> As demonstrated during the festival, the oil is extracted from the digasso tree, scientifically known as Campnosperma. A cavity is cut into the bark to collect a clear liquid that's a mixture of oil and water, which, when exposed to oxygen in the air, forms the dark colored oil or digasso. The oil is then poured into a separate bamboo shoot. A hole is made at the end of the bamboo to separate the water from the oil. <laughs> it is then sealed and ready for exchange. The oil has medicinal properties but is mainly used as a perfume or moisturizer giving traditional dancers a dark and shiny appearance for traditional ceremonies. In the past, the oil was traded with the holy people for pigs, salt and stone axe blades. Today, it continues to be traded for pearl shells and cowries from the Posavi people en route from coastal areas. This year, the community has built on the success of the first two events. The festival was recognized by the National Cultural Commission as an annual national event on February 15th this year. The event was staged to educate communities about the significance of Kutubu's rich biodiversity, preserving Kutubu's unique cultural heritage, and promoting partnerships in sustainable development. The festival created an opportunity for ecotourism, income generation at the local level and an avenue for educating young people on the significance of their culture and its dependency on the natural environment. That's all we have on Talk Pixar. See you next time.